Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome back. Today we are actually doing a really fun one. This is one of my favorite things and it's because if you get really good at it, it's really fun. And if you aren't very good at it, you probably shy away from it all the time. So let's go ahead and hop into it. Hit that like button, hit that sub button guys. It helps out tremendously. This channel is doing way better numbers than I ever thought it would. I was just doing this to upload to, um, kind of help people find resources. I was not trying to do this um, at the scale that it's at, and I'm super happy that it's helping people. So thank you guys, thank you for the support. Thank you for this year. It's been an awesome year. Um, it's been a lot of fun. If you guys wanna support the channel, hit the Patreon as well. Um, I don't know how many of you guys know YouTube. I don't make any money off YouTube. Um, it's the you'd have to have you have to have a lot of views to make any sort of real money off youtube so that's the only way it can support me so i appreciate you guys and thank you guys so much for 2023 now before we hop into 2024 let's go ahead and do one more thing this is the best tool in my opinion that can be used and i'm not saying obsidian obsidian is the tool we're going to use to cover it because it's a very 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 good tool but note taking Note taking is the number one tool in cybersecurity, in IT, in any capacity. If you are good at documentation and note taking, report writing, all that stuff, you are hands down the most valuable person on your team. I will fight anybody to the death for that or to prove that. Okay. So let's get good at it. Let's have fun with it. I actually love note taking. I love report writing. I love documentation writing, all that stuff because I'm good at it. And it, I wasn't good at it when I started. That's why I like it so much. Cause I've, I've made myself good at it and I practice it a lot. Now I'm using obsidian here. It is not my favorite. Um, I like obsidian, but I think Gitbook is a better. The problem is Gitbook costs. Um, and so get pay, the Patreon notes that I have are on Gitbook and they cost, it's like $7 a person to have other people involved, right? Obsidian doesn't. So that's why I'm using Obsidian. It's open source. You can download it for free. It's really, it's, they're similar. That's why I'm using them, but let's go ahead and hop into it. I've wasted enough time. So first things first, when you're doing reports and when you're doing notes, this is specifically for notes. And the reason I'm pointing that out is because I'm only covering the notes here. I'm not going to cover documentation and report writing because that's a whole nother video. Okay. But notes, when I'm doing an engagement, I have so many notes that is going on. So today I'm going to show you guys kind of how I write notes and keep in mind, notes should be specific to you. What I mean by that is as I'm writing notes, you may look at them and go, I have no idea what he's talking about, but I can go back and look at them and say, I know exactly what I was doing, what I was thinking, etc., And I can formalize that process. So why we use obsidian is because of the ability to link things. So what we're going to do is I'm going to make a new one here. We'll just make a new one and we'll name it OSINT investigation Santa Claus. Christmas just happened. We're going to name it OSINT Investigation Santa Claus. One thing I like about Obsidian, Obsidian allows you to kind of, if you're quick with markup language, you can just do things the way you know how. For instance, if I did OSINT Investigation Santa Claus and I want the next one to be, if I do two hashtags, it's going to make a header that is twice the second header, header two, right? So header one, this would be header one. So I can say, Santa Claus, right? And then, and if you do that, by the way, that makes a tag. So what I might do is I might go here and do a tag real quick that says Santa. Why does that matter? Because now when I'm looking for something, guess what? I can just search Santa. So I can put tags. So right off the bat, this note taking app is helping me tremendously. And this again is obsidian. It's free. The link will be in the chat. So right off the bat. Now, if I want to, I can go over here and I can search Santa and it will take me to this page because I put a tag in there. So that's huge. So now we just go down and we say, Hey, we want a double header, right? And we're going to say Santa. See how it's secondary big. It's not quite the biggest, but it's that's header two. So now I have a header. And I could say 
Santa profile, and we'll just say name, Chris Kringle, right? And this is if I was doing his address, North Pole, work. Now, here's where we get interesting because I'm gonna show you guys how you can link different things. So here we have our files, right? We have our OSINT investigation on Santa Claus and we'd go ahead and do this. Now I'm gonna show you how I kind of correlate my tools. So now what I do is we're looking for the workplace of Santa, right? So we're gonna do a quick OSINT investigation. Now I will tell you, this is actually from the, um, the previous CTF competition I just hosted where we had Chris Kringle um, LinkedIn. So Chris Kringle LinkedIn page. Do, 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 do. Here we go. All right, let's just go to LinkedIn.com Chris Kringle. Now we can go here and look at the search page because I'm trying not to log in. And you scroll down and there's a bunch of Chris Kringles, but there's only one that works at Stuffy24, right? So we'll say, okay, exit that. So first things first, I'm gonna put in here his workplace, right? Stuffy24 is where he works. Now here's where I integrate multiple tools I use, right? So here, if you look, we have tools or add-ons that I used, right? And I use these for OSINT investigations. I have a whole Patreon video on this, so on what I use. But what I'm gonna show you is, let's say I wanna use Fireshot here, and it had an update, that's all. And I'm gonna say I'm gonna capture the entire page. First, let's get rid of that, I don't want that up, right? And we're gonna say, okay, we wanna capture the entire page, and we'll say, Actually, just, just for the sake of it, so I'm not wasting everybody's time, we'll just capture the this part, right? We just want his activities and his profile, whatever. We'll just say capture the visible part, just to show you that it can do multiple things. So there's a screenshot of just the visible parts, right? Okay, cool. So let's save it as an image, and we'll save it as desktop Chris Kringle. Now, this may not seem like it's relevant to your notes right now. You might, some of you might say that I don't get it. Well, let me show you. If I was doing this, I would go ahead and open another one and I would say Chris Kringle LinkedIn, right? And the only thing that's going to be on these notes is going to be, uh, do, do, do. we can just go ahead and go to places desktop this is the only thing going to be on these notes right perfect well you can see it actually created it for me i didn't even have to do it it's right there so i can delete this page and then one thing you saw here is what if i want to say work and then i went right here and i did these brackets that it just did if i do double brackets and hit chris kringle look at that it links it so now we can have all of our notes separated. We could create directories. So I could do a new folder here and say screenshots, right? And then I could put Chris Kringle into the screenshots folder. And then when I go here, if I wanna look at the screenshot, I can click there and see the screenshot and then just go back. So right off the bat, I'm already seeing value in, in these notes because it's starting to put them in order the way I want. It's starting to actually categorize them. Okay, so here's our oh, the actual main homepage that we're gonna be doing, but we can also add Chris Kringle screenshots, things like that, right? So right off the bat, I'm looking at, we're doing Santa Claus, right? Well, what if we wanted to say, okay, let's do another directory and we're saying people that work here. Now, obviously this wouldn't be the name of the directory, but I'm, I'm doing a fake place, right? I'm just doing a no sent investigation on a fake place. Santa just happens to be one of them. So we put Santa in there, right? So now we go back here and we create a new one and this is report. So this is gonna be the report of what's going on. So first we'll just put, we'll just do the hashtag people found, right? And then we'll say Chris Kringle 
And then we can go and put right here, OSINT investigation for Santa Claus. There's the link. Now we wanna do Buddy the Elf. Maybe we found a guy named Buddy the Elf. Okay, well watch this. So now we go back here. There's the OSINT investigation for Santa. We go back in here. We say new note. This one's Buddy the Elf. Okay, now here we say Buddy, workplace, doesn't really matter what we're putting here. North Pole, um, real name, Buddy, whatever, doesn't really matter. And then let's say we go here and we want Buddy the Elf and Santa to be linked together because they work there, right? Well, what if we say we want a new one here and the new one is workplace because we gotta know where they work, right? So we're writing reports on each individual entity, right? So workplace, we might say North Pole, North Pole. Now, why is this important? Because here we might link, might say, here we wanna work, link Buddy the Elf, and then we also wanna link Chris Kringle, which is Santa Claus, right? Now, the reason we wanna link them is I'll show you. So now we know they all work at North Pole, okay? Well, I would put a tag in here, North, in a second I'd put a tag in there, North Pole. Right, I'd put a tag in there for North Pole, so now I can search it later, right? So now the nice thing is we can go down here and we can say open this view, right? And we can actually look. Interesting. Well, look at this. So the workplace is linked, whoops, go back to graph view. The workplace is linked to Buddy the Elf and to the OSINT investigation, but the report is only linked to Santa Claus. Okay, well, we don't wanna see, first off, I don't want the report linked to everything. So what would I do? What would be different? Well, what I would do, and this is what you should be doing in any of your reports. The report, instead of being linked directly to him, I would say Chris Kringle A1, right? A1, Buddy the Elf A2, for instance, okay? Now in here, we might say, put another tag, and we'll say A1, and then in here, we put entity name. If I could spell entity, entity name A1. Now, why do we do this? Well, let me tell you. So we'll put buddy and then we'll put another tag A2 entity name. How have I spelled entity wrong twice? Okay. Now, the reason we do this and you should be doing this in all your reports is because you do not want to directly reference certain things. So people is one thing, right? But let's say this report, so let's say instead of Chris Kringle and Buddy the Elf, we say we have A1 and A2. Now, why is this important? Because when you're typing up your report, you can say when researching OSINT information on entity, I'm afraid I'm gonna spell it wrong again, entity A1, we found that the workplace was the North Pole. Okay, now why is this a big deal? Because now if I give this report to somebody, this executive report, right? I can give it to whoever. It's already redacted. It's already, this doesn't mean anything to anybody. A1 and A2 is not a person to anybody, right? The only time it's a person to somebody is if somebody has the references. So why is that important? This is how you should be writing all of your executive reports because the people at the top, they don't care that Joe Schmo down here is the account you found or Tim's security or credit card number was here or Tim's whatever, um, social security number is here. They don't wanna see all that. They wanna know, okay, we found a social security number. Well, entity A1 social security number, SS number one, 
was found here, right? They don't need to correlate the two. Nobody should be seeing whose information. Why is this important? Because what if I said I found A1's password, okay? What if I said I found Chris Kringle's password and his username is Chris Kringle, right? What if this report, someone dropped it on the side of the road or somebody found it, right? Well, now your report has the keys to the kingdom. You said you know Chris Kringle's password. You found it using OSINT. So now anybody that finds it, if it's in the wrong hands, they go, oh, I can find Chris Kringle's account. Easy. If you redact all that information and make it entity one or person one or whatever, you can then have all of your notes categorized. And when you're done, guess what? I can write this whole report, right? It's already redacted and all my notes have all the information. I don't have to go back and redact everything and pull everything and change the executive summary, right? Now look at the graph view. Look at that. We have a report over here that's not linked to anything and it shouldn't be. But look at this. Our workplace, our workplace shows us that we have Santa Claus and Buddy the Elf working there. So if we're doing a large scale investigation, quickly we can look at the graph and see, okay, North Pole over here and then all the entities that work there right and then we can use screenshots kind of like if you're a web designer you use um assets off to the side we can have all these assets off to the side so that when we're looking at this we can say okay his workplace is chris kringle okay there's the screenshots cool cool perfect and then okay we ran xyz command screenshot perfect and we have all this information saved now this does require a little bit more of a stand up up front right you have to categorize your notes but look at how much easier this will be when I'm done. Let's say I did this full investigation. The report, all I have to do to write it is finish the report, the information, right? But all of my stuff information's up here and I don't have to sit there and guess. I can just go, okay, for A1, I want to find him. So I search A1. Okay, there's A1. So it takes me straight to A1. Perfect. So now I know Santa's A1. So now, I know the information for him. Okay, I can go back to here. I can go back to the report and I can say A1. This user, we found their workplace. Right? Like, let's just say, because I can just go back to it and look, A1 workplace, boom, I have all the information. Right? So, right off the bat, you're getting all the information. The other nice thing is, I don't have to sit here and s decipher what screenshots go where, all that stuff, it directly links. And you can do so many advanced things with, with Obsidian. It's a great tool. Again, it's not my go-to, but it is my go-to if I'm offline and want an open source tool. So I definitely recommend it. This video was just to show you the capabilities of good note taking. I obviously didn't take real notes. These are just made up. But my point that I'm trying to show you is that if you are good at this, if you categorize your notes in the way where you have an executive summary and you have all of your entities, you have everything you found, you have all of your processes, all that stuff documented in different categories, you can take all of your work that you've done and just take notes as you're going. Just do it as you're going. And then you finish. And guess what? That writing that final report is so easy because I just go through my notes, okay, got it, go to the next, do, 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 whatever. It becomes hard when you're not taking good notes and you're not categorizing, you're not actually doing things properly, and then you get to the end, and guess what? Ah, crap, I don't remember, uh, I gotta go find 50 screenshots and look through it. For instance, if it wasn't an OSINT investigation, what if I just did one for, okay, here, I'm just gonna do hosts, right? Or instead of hosts, we'll just say, we'll delete the hosts, delete, and we'll say we want a new directory, hosts, right? And then in hosts, we go ahead and we say we want, put that hosts, we want the untitled, we'll just make it host is 192.168.1.10, right? That's the host. Now this will be... We'll just say um, host one. Doesn't really matter what you name it, right? In map scan results. Then I would have this link to a screenshot of in map scan results, right? 
and then I would say okay open port SSH vulnerability obviously I would be much more in depth with my notes but I'm just showing vulnerability would be um, I don't know insecure ID RSA file for root right so right off the bat we got the information okay cool now I need to write my final report and in there I have hosts and I say keep in mind I can make it double header hosts and then here I'll just say okay in my hosts I have host one and if I wanted to I can tag that and say host one but I'll just leave it say host one and I can say SSH vulnerability insecure ID RSA permissions something like that right so right off the bat I can look at this report and I can go okay they have a host with SSH vulnerability I have a, they have these people were found online this blah 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 and I didn't give away anybody's information if this was found on the ground nobody knows what company we're talking about there's nothing right this is the executive summary nobody knows but if I go back and I look at my hosts I have the full information all the proof I have who ran what when all that stuff in my notes so it makes reporting very easy obsidian is a great tool I recommend it for everybody if you're note taker I I recommend it 100% you can do bookmarks you can do all kinds of stuff there's command lines there's so many things you can do you can put calendars in there I just wanted you guys to see that when I take notes I don't just scribble down stuff and hope that I remember at the end I take serious notes I take them very categorically and I'm always 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 referencing my notes I do the same thing when I take courses when I take classes and when I'm getting ready for um, you know certifications and all that stuff this is how I categorize stuff this is a skill what I mean by that is nobody wakes up and goes oh yeah I can just I, I know how to do this all of a sudden you have to practice and find what works for you practice 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 every engagement every CTF you do if you're doing try hack me if you're doing hack the box you should be taking notes like this if you're not familiar with them and you should be practicing so that way when you do go and do something big you're not questioning it you're just like oh yeah take notes just like normal and your stuff is there keep that in mind hopefully this helps you guys go into the new year make this a new year's resolution get better at notes this is the most untalked about skill in cybersecurity that you need to know how to do and will help you tremendously thank you guys hope you guys have a great 2023 and hope your 2024 is even better and have a great day thanks